With the introduction of patch 14, I think it's safe to say that the game has gone through a ton of changes and the hideout is no exception. While the hideout itself has not changed much, the items and their values have definitely shifted a bit from last wipe, which is why today I'm here to show you guys which crafts are most profitable early in the wipe and how you can use them to make millions of rubles. Before we jump into the hideout, I just want to give a quick reminder that I'm live over on Twitch pretty much every day between 6 and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you have any questions related to my videos or just the game in general, feel free to stop by and hang out for a bit. All right, so jumping straight into the hideout here, as you guys can see, I've almost got everything max level. We got a few more things we need to do in order to get this all the way leveled up. But I wanted to go ahead and show you guys all the things that I craft for profit because I've got most of the stations the highest level that you can get. So I'm going to clear my crafts real quick and then we'll jump right into it. All right, so we got everything cleared. First thing we're going to do is jump into the lavatory. Now, what we're going to be doing for this video is showing you guys the things that I rotate through during the day and there's well we're gonna add in what i craft at night if you guys have seen my videos on the crafting and hideout management skills you'll know that it's important to rotate between crafts and do long crafts at night if you want to maximize those skills but that's not what this video is about you guys want to know what you should be crafting to make money right now so starting out during the day while i'm playing the game i rotate between fleece and these gas mask air filters the reason why i do the gas mask air filters they're not very profitable but i like that quick reset so i can get back to the fleece keep crafting these and these are what's going to make my money obviously crafting these air filters is going to cut into the profit a little bit but i can make a whole lot more fleeces if i do it this way now fleece isn't going to be worth a ton of money for very much longer so you're going to want to transition over to cordura at some point but the reason i'm doing fleece is because it's worth more right now if we go ahead and look it up they're sitting around 20k sometimes they go a little bit higher and cordura is way lower around 12 so if you want to make the most amount of money go ahead and do fleece earlier in the wipe around like a weekend these things were selling over 30k a piece so i've made a ton of money doing that but if you're interested in the air filter craft these gas masks usually go between 15 and 30k but sometimes you can get lucky and go over on to fence and you can get these things for around 10k a piece usually that's what i try to do and then the air filters themselves they sell for anywhere between 10 and 20k usually it depends on the time of day how much you can sell it for but also you can use the gas mask air filter filters to craft water filters so if you don't have any water filters saved up from the beginning of wipe you can craft them here and you can do this at night instead of the mag box which is what i do at night so the reason why i do the mag box at night is because most of the time while i'm playing i can end up getting enough of these bolts and nuts in order to do that and then the fuel obviously i use fuel i keep my generator running all the time non-stop i never turn it off obviously to help with the hideout management skill but this one just makes the most sense for me because nine times out of 10, by the time I go to bed, I'm ready to craft this. And then when I wake up the next day, I can sell this for about 250K. Also forgot to mention, you can get these fleece caps from Ragman. They're about 2K a piece. So the profit there is pretty good. Moving on from that, we're going to go into the workbench. Not much has changed with this. The crafts that I do are still kind of the same. So right now during the day, I'm rotating between the red pliers and the printed circuit boards. If you go over to the fleet, these yellow pliers are usually between 10 and 15K. I would recommend trying to buy them as cheap as possible because the higher you spend on these, the less profit you're going to make on the pliers. I like the pliers craft because it's very quick, 13 minutes. And the more you level up your crafting skill, obviously the shorter this time will get so when you craft these and you save up a bunch of them you're going to want to sell these to therapist she buys them for 17,010 rubles a piece so as long as you are buying these pliers under that price point you're going to be making money on this it's not a lot but i tend to save up a bunch of them and sell them all at once and i kind of use it as like a little savings account also like crafting these printed circuit boards because they do typically sell for pretty good money sometimes you can catch them selling for upwards of 20k and if you can get the dvd drives for pretty cheap under 20k like you can see right here we got one for 13 14k buy the dvds cheap sell the printed circuit boards high you'll be making a ton of money now at nighttime i'm usually either doing the ap 6.3 or the piranha the only reason i'm doing the piranha is because you can only buy 70 per reset on the trader and piranha is absolutely nasty this wipe you should be using it on every single
single shotgun quest that you have. It's helped me finish set up super quick. It's a super, super good round. Highly recommend. I'm doing Piranha or AP63 at night just to keep the timers up and going. Moving on from there, we're going to jump into Intel Center. So a lot of you may not have this, but I have Intel Center level two. Right now I'm rotating between the flash drives and the maps. And the only reason I'm doing this is so I can level up my crafting skill. There's not much profit to be made here, if any at all, probably not. Doing these super, super long crafts passively really helps your crafting skill. So if you guys want to do that, go for it. Moving on from there, obviously we got the Bitcoin farm. Mine is kind of in its baby stage right now. I've only got two GPUs in there. Nothing crazy. This one's self-explanatory. Just throw some GPUs in there and you will get passive Bitcoin and Bitcoin is selling for dumb money to swipe. So up next, we got the water collector. Again, self-explanatory. You just throw your water filters in here, craft the super waters. Helps with leveling up your hideout management skills. So try to keep this going nonstop as much as you can. Right now, I'm just selling the purified waters. I'm not doing moonshine because if you guys missed my previous video on how to succeed early wipe, you'll know that I hoard sugars for a very long time until they reach about 65 to 70 K. And then I sell them off when I have like three or four of the little mini fridges full. So I don't like using my sugars to craft the moonshine early in the wipe. The only way I will craft a moonshine is let's say I'm in raid. I find a sugar. I'll throw it in my gamma. If I die and it's not found in raid, then I'll craft a moonshine. But other than that, I'm not using my found in raid sugars for moonshine. Next up, we got the nutrition unit. Obviously another one of my favorites. You guys already know I'm crafting a ton of sugar as much as I possibly can, but I'm also trying to keep in mind my crafting skill. So when I do rotate, I will rotate with the emergency water rations. Now this one, it is profitable, but not by much. If you find the keck tapes in raid, if you find all of your water bottles in raid, you use them to rehydrate before you go into the next raid drink them down to one and you got a bunch of them stockpiled up this will be much much cheaper and the profit will be great these ewrs are selling over 20k right now so even if you buy all of the things needed for this you're still going to be making money but if you use the water to rehydrate after every raid kind of double dip in there so again during the day i switch between ewr and sugar usually i'll do two sugar in a row and then do an ewr and then do two sugar ewr so on and so forth doing two sugar in a row doesn't help my crafting skill but i'm just again trying to stockpile as much as i can in preparation for sugar to be expensive and then usually at nighttime i'll save one of my purified waters and i'll do the 20 hot rod craft not much of a profit to be made on this but it does give you 11 hours of crafting time which helps with the crafting skill so usually i will do that at night so sugar and ewrs during the day hot rod at night and then finally we have the med station not much has changed with this one as well i do the pile of meds and then i also do the ai2 med kit or the cheese the reason why i do these two crafts i like stockpiling up all the piles of meds because you can do the barter for the items case which i believe they changed it a little bit to take piles of meds now maybe it was like that last wipe i'm not sure but 25 of these and 10 o scopes you can get yourself an items case so that's what i'm doing with them until these things are worth a bit more i think they're sitting around nine or ten k not very profitable but if you wanted to save them up and just sell them you could do that and then i also do the cheese because it's one of the quicker resets so i can go back and forth between these two and then i'll usually just hoard a bunch of these get like 20 or 30 whatever and then sell them on the flea so i can get my flea market rep up because at the beginning of a wipe you only have two slots on the flea and it's super annoying i've got three now but i'm trying to get to four as fast as i can and then sometimes Sometimes I'll throw in this for the Calic B. And oddly enough, the Calic Bs sell pretty good if they're found in raid. Most of the time they're sitting around 25K. So if you wanted to do this, I mean, you're already buying these to use them anyways. If you get it down to one, you might as well turn it into a fresh one, sell it on the fleet for around 25K and you make some of your money back. Basically get Calic Bs for free. And then to top it all off at nighttime, this one's kind of weird. None of these crafts are very long except for the defibrillator, but I don't like doing this because it's kind of expensive and you lose money so usually at night i will either do propodols or sj6s depending on how much of each i need unfortunately the propodols takes the golden star and the ibuprofen and i have a bunch of these but they're not used at all i don't like using these painkillers because they take a ton of hydration but i do like using the propodols because they take no hydration so a quick recap on this we're doing piles of meds and the cheese during the day sometimes we'll do the calic bees and then we're doing either propodol or sj6 at 
night now i want to show you guys a little bit about how i store all of this stuff i've got one junk box specifically for doing all of this so i have it all in different sections and basically i will wait until this entire thing is full and then i will do a massive sell the last time i did one it wasn't quite as full i think i maybe had one row of fleece half a row of these and then this whole section down here was full of the meds and the pcbs and i want to say i made around four or five mil after selling everything and i didn't even sell the pliers i saved these up until i have a bunch of them so if you just keep your crafts going as much as you possibly can save them up let's say you play all day you die a lot you lose all your money but you've got this entire junk box full of things that you've been crafting you can sell it all and kind of hit a quick reset button in order to get back on your feet and obviously this wipe it's easier than ever to make money streets is absolutely insane for doing like scav runs or money runs and of course we're gonna have the people in the comments saying oh you could just make this much money by going to streets on a scab yes you can this video is not about the best way to make money this video is about how you can use the hideout to make more money a lot of people tend to get that confused with the videos that i make so i know people are still going to be down in the comments saying the same thing but i just want you guys to understand if you made it to this point in the video the hideout is just a tool to use in order to make more money if you can go into scav runs and come out with one mil every single time and that works for you awesome if you don't want to use a hideout awesome no big deal I'm just showing you guys, if you want another way to make money, this is how you do it with the hideout. All right, so that's going to wrap it up. I just figured I would do another type of video like this because that's kind of how I got my start on YouTube. That was one of the first videos that kind of got a lot of views and people were very interested in. So this is everything that I'm doing at this point in the wipe. We're about three weeks into patch 14 and I've been able to use it and make a ton of money to kind of keep me afloat. So anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Again, quick reminder, we're live over on Twitch, usually around. 6 or 7 p.m eastern standard time it'd be cool to see some of you guys over there if you got questions about the game life whatever just you know you want to ask me something feel free to drop in and hang out for a bit but other than that i'll see you guys in the next video